So, hi, uh, happy um, to be here today and uh, talk a bit about container shipping. Alexa and myself, we work for Hamburg Süd, which is a container shipping line based in Hamburg, which will become 150 years old in November this year. So it's an old industry. Containers are not that old, but uh, I will, uh, we will talk about that uh, during our talk. So we want to share our fascination with this uh, shipping, in, uh, shipping of uh, containers. Um, so before containerization, uh, shipping of uh, general goods was really labor intensive. So in the 50s and 60s, most general cargo was uh, shipped as bag goods in cartons or crates. During low, load and dis discharge uh, or transshipments of uh, between transport types, so between trucks and, and vessels or trucks and rail and so on, all these goods uh, need to be moved individually, which was uh, slow and uh, um, to, uh, yeah, took time, it was very labor in intensive. In fact, uh, where you sit now, the MS Bleichen, that was uh, built in 1958, uh, just at the beginning of container shipping. And imagine uh, the place you're sitting in here, uh, which was stowed manually by hand. So the hatches here would, go, uh, would open, and then the cranes would bring down the, the, the cargo and would be distributed here in the room. Um, then in um, 1956, so two years before the MS Bleichen was, was uh, built, Malcolm McLean um, had the idea to transport different goods in standardized containers and built the first container vessel with a capacity of 58 TEU. TEU stands for 20-foot equivalent unit, so a, a small 20-foot container. Uh, the containers were sized in a way so that, then, that they can be transported on a vessel on a truck uh, and on a rail. Uh, and the uh, advantage was that there was a fast transshipment between land and sea. So the handling between land and sea was, uh, was fast. And therefore, the this first uh, company of Malcolm McLean was called Sealand, which is today a subsidiary of our mother company, uh, Maersk. So it's still the brand Sealand still exists. And um, when the container was invented, it took some years until the first container was handled in Hamburg, which was 1969. But starting then, uh, the rate of goods that were uh, uh, carried and handled via containers uh, uh, grew every year. And in the year 2000, we had about 90% containerization. And now in 2020, we are about, oh, above 98% of, of general goods are handled in the port of Hamburg via containers. And at the same time, also the transport volume uh, grew from 17 million tons per year in 1970 to about 100 million tons uh, this year. So there are different container types. Uh, this is, so to say, the, the, the basic, the most basic container you can have, a 20-foot uh, standard steel container for, for general cargo. But there are about 700 different types, different lengths, different uh, uh, um, ways you can use them. Uh, you have, for example, the 40-foot container, which is the larger ones. And in this example, it's not a normal 40-foot container. It's a so-called high cube. It's not 260 high as a normal container, but uh, 290. And you can see this uh, when you look at the edges with these yellow-black stripes. So if you drive on the autobahn and pass a truck with a, with a container, you can have a look uh, if you uh, identify these stripes. And then you know, ah, that's a high cube. Um, uh, then, uh, very important containers also for Hamburg Süd are the so-called reefers. So, you can say every white containers you see out, outside, this is typically always uh, reefers. So, containers where um, uh, they have a controlled temperature, where you cool things. You can transport vegetables, you can transport meat or fish. Or even, because it's not a, only about uh, refrigerating, but also controlled temperature, also, artwork is transported in reefers because artwork needs a controlled temperature of, I think, 18 degrees. And these containers can provide that. And then there are lots and lots of different other containers like uh, uh, open tops, tanks, uh, insulated containers, ventilated containers, containers with controlled atmosphere, and so forth. So there's a big variety of uh, containers for different purposes. Now, coming to the vessels. 
uh, if you uh, here in Hamburg and you look onto the Elbe, you might see one of these big uh, container ships. Um, this example, the uh, Moscow Maersk, uh, has a length of about 400 meter, a width of uh, about 60 meter, and can carry about 20,000 20 foot containers. But even if you see it, you, you, it's very hard to, to imagine how mu much that is. And so I'll give you some comparison. If you unload this vessel, the whole vessel, onto trucks, it's 10,000 trucks you can, you can load. Or, just looking at the volume, you can uh, load 2,500 Boeing 747 or 100 cargo <coughs> trains, which are each uh, 100 meters uh, long. And to give you another idea of how much that is, um, if you place these trucks on the autobahn between Hamburg and Bremen, you can fill the whole autobahn, 100 kilometers, on two lanes with these trucks from a single container vessel. So this is uh, just about the, the size of, of these ships. And then there's also uh, a lot of containers. So individual containers that flow around the world, and it is estimated that there are between 45 and 80 million containers worldwide. Nobody knows exactly, there are no records. Uh, lots of containers which are not in use anymore are now used as, as homes or, or shelters or so forth. Um, but if you would uh, put them side by side, all these containers, you could span the whole the circumference of the world 11 times. So that's about the static, uh, uh, statics about container shipping, and now I hand over to Alexa to give you an insight on the dynamics. Okay, thank you. Okay, to transport such a huge amount, incredible amount of containers via one single vessel, we need a very optimized, very intelligent store planning, which means that we know uh, or that we have a plan where to store which container on the vessel. And therefore, we need experts, of course. And um, why we need this, well, I will show you here. If we do not, then we get trouble, right? Um, so you see here, in best case, um, the, the containers simply fall over like dominoes, but at least they stay on the vessel. But what you see here is that and this is really annoying, uh, when the heaviest containers are placed on one side of the vessel and the whole vessel tips over. And what's really, really bad is to put all heavy containers in the back or in the front of the container ship so that the vessel really actually breaks through when it is on a wave. So that makes it pretty clear why we need still planning, a very good still planning. And we, I, I need to mention here also, when we talk about dangerous goods, for example, biohazard or uh, flammable things on, on, on the vessel, they need to store, be stored on a very safe place, right? Okay, so um, the point is, in the, in the past, this was done manually by experts, but right now, with the increasing number of containers, we need to have good systems doing their job, and, and systems using the whole infrastructure of the, of the vessel optimally. Okay. Another task which becomes more and more challenging with the increasing number of containers is to guarantee that the right container is at the right place at the right time. Just to illustrate it here, here you can see typical container flows all over the world. And what you see here is that um, it's very typical to ship light-weighted plastic toys from China to Europe in 40-foot containers, the big ones. And the same type of containers is used to ship cars from Europe to America. And one of our main business is to carry fruits like bananas or meat from South America to Europe. And of course, we need reefers for that. And another example is we can, or normally, we use 20-foot containers, normal containers, to carry very heavy cargo to China, for example. Here you can see oh, what, what, a, what a good example for that is, is to carry waste paper from Europe to China because they need it for, uh, for the production of cotton. 
Okay, so the question now is how do we get these containers back to the place where they are needed? And this is very challenging. And the answer is very simple, but also sad. So the situation is that every fifth container on a vessel is empty. So they just ship it around without any cargo. Useless, right? So we need to get better. And especially today, with this, sudden, with this boom of container shipping, we need to get better for that. Okay. So um, every disruption right now at this challenging time with so many containers on, uh, on the road and so on, um, every disruption cause delays. And every big disruption leads to deadlock. I think you know this picture and the story behind it, right? But just let me give some figures and to remember you what we're talking about here. Uh, the Suez Canal uh, connects the Mediterranean Sea with the Red Sea, and it's one of the most important waterways of the world. And it's so important to have this canal because it saves the shipping around Africa. And it's a time saving of one week. So it's very important to have this open, this canal. The Ever Given is a 400 meter long container ship. You, see, you can see it here, with a capacity of 20,000 containers. And at this time, the whole ship, you can see it here, it's completely full, right? So unfortunately, the wind was not so good and it blocked the whole canal for six days last month, March. And the situation was that more than 200 ships were waiting. That was really incredible. And, and, and the global trade was significantly disturbed by this situation. So this makes it very clear how, how the situation is currently and why we need <laughs> good ships and so on, right? And another example also is the, the, the ongoing corona pandem pandemic, because um, this leads continuously to port closings. And in the last weeks, we had the situation that about 50 container ships were waiting in front of China ports to go there. Okay, so long story short, we are completely booked. All containers are on the road or on the sea, but at least, or but still, you need to wait for your furniture. And we want to change that, and therefore we need you. So I think we made it very clear, right? Bringing together the real containers with IT containers is very challenging and makes fun. So we have so many open positions and we would love to see you there and to, yeah, just, just have a talk, right? Um, yeah, I would like to thank you and uh, we wish you much fun here at the MS Bleichen. <laughs>